one. Hello. Hi. Happy Christmas, everyone. Yes. I've got um, Sansa here. <laughs> Mark did a Zoom earlier in the week and the Santa looked like it was bigger than him. <laughs> I've decided not to wear my Santa hat today, John. No, it was quite odd, actually. So I think it's probably... Yes. I can't find my endless, so we're, we're completely devoid of any festive gear, really. Well, and we've just heard that um, London and the South East have, have moved up to Tier 4. Yeah. Basically, Christmas is effectively removed from the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we still have this space. And John and I were just reflecting. Um, it's been wonderful to, to connect and meet with so many um, great uh, characters and music fans over the last nine months. Absolutely. And we wanted to do a, a shout out to a few of them. Mm. So there was uh, Stavros the Spinning Greek. We had Teddy. Yeah. Ben Costello. Yeah. We had Anders from Stockholm. Fred, Big Star 1000 from Melbourne. Paul from the Netherlands. Uh, Roger Coleman. Yeah. From uh, Nashville. Nashville, indeed. And we had uh, Dave last week. Last session, we had Dave, local bandography. Yeah. From... Chris 1427 Basket from uh, Switzerland. Yeah. I've forgotten the next one. John, mm. the six inch pianist. Indeed, that's right. I moved it. Have we, do, have we done. Um, Lawrence, the mellow man. Lawrence, you've done Big Star? Yep. Yeah. So that might be, is that it? That is it. Fantastic. Range and we, we did have a special guest lined up um, today, but he unfortunately is not well at the moment. So. Uh, Just got the duo. Get better soon. And, yeah. Uh, have a good time. We will have a special guest in the new year, I feel. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, should we get on with it, John? Oh, we should say um, we're going to share seven records each. We don't know what the other person's got. And the last three will be our find of the year, our reissue of the year and our album of the year. Yeah. Do you want to kick off, John? I kick off? Yeah. I mean, yet another sad passing this week actually which was stanley cowell yes earlier in the week he's um kind of great very very kind of i think in a way underrated pit i mean he came out at a time when there were so many fantastic piano players around in, in the in the 60s and early 70s um and of course he was pl still playing right up until now and this was his album that came out on ecm which is um mm. uh, dave in fact showed on his um on his um, Instagram account yesterday, I think it was. And it's a great band, just a trio with um, Stanley um, Cal, Stanley Clark on bass and um, Jimmy Hopps on drums. Jimmy Hopps who played with um, played with uh, um, Russ Unran and Kirk and uh, also with a whole load of the um, Star Trees people. And it's a great album, this one. It's kind of also one of the most sampled um, ECM records. It's this very open sounding very little reverb, which makes it very sound unusual for, for ECM. Just a great record. And there's two tracks, Mamoon and Miss Vicky, which are absolutely fantastic on him. I played it last night and it just sounded so good, actually. It's all so long time. So, and it was a very early one. It came out in 72, so it was only the 20, in the, the early kind of 20s of the ECM label. But of course, he went on to make some other great records in Star Trees and other ones as well. But I think this is still my favourite, this one. Mm. Well, Illusions to English, I, say. I suspect you might possibly be sharing this artist as well, John, but I'm going to get in there first. Somebody <laughs> else who died last week, yeah, which was Harold Budd. And this is the album um, Pavilion of Dreams. It's a rather lot of glare on it. And um, this is also from uh, 1972. And uh, well, that actually, actually, no, it started in 1972. It was released in 1976 on the Obscure label and was produced by Brian Eno and uh, has this amazing track called Bismillahi Brahmani Rahim, mm. <laughs> which was written for the sax player Marion Brown. And um, if you're looking for a piece of transcendent sonic soundscape to lose yourself in, this is, you, you could do a lot worse than uh, have a listen to this album. Very much, it kind of envelops you in a in a beautiful uh, warm bath of sonics. Mm. 
and uh, it's just a very chilled but also interesting album to listen to. Yeah, the, 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 on the, um, in fact, on the radio show I played, the, there's another version of that, which is on the Marin Brown record, which is kind of um, almost with a, with a slightly different lineup. And it's an absolutely gorgeous tune, actually. I was going to show that, but I couldn't find it, actually, weirdly. Ah. So, um, I know it's, it's got to be around somewhere, but I, God knows where it is. I've been doing some quite major sorting of the records this week. So there's lots of piles around, so I couldn't find that. Um, so um, Art Pepper, it's a horrible cover on this record, actually. But I've been, um, I've been kind, of, I've, I've been this watching. Um, there's an American TV series called Bosch, which uh, will be well known to Americans, but has not been shown in the UK before. Which is Amazon Prime. It's like a cop series, and music features heavily in the series. And Al Pepper is the main kind of almost the main, almost like another character in the um, in the uh, series actually, because he's featured so much. Really, and I've a lot of Art Pepper this week actually. And this is. A great album with Hampton Hall is Charlie Hayden and Shelley Mann from '76. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a cliche. Everyone says this, but you never made a bad record, really, Art Pepper, mm. as well. And um, this is one I, yeah, kind of never played as much as the others, but it's a really good cool one. Came out on Contemporary Records. Sounds great as well, actually. It's got a really nice. Good okay, next up is a record that uh, arrived through the letterbox this week. Wonderful cover. Mm. Ego by Tony Williams. It's a very, very odd record, though. <laughs> do you know this, John? It's, up to you. it's a wonderful. I, I, I mean, the, the cover is, I have to say, probably better than the record. I think I did actually sell it. Actually, it was a bit unusual for. You, Tony. you sold this. I think I, I think I, I think it went in a cull a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to have it because I just, it, it now sounds, it just sounds like the band had definitely ingested something <laughs> during the recording session it's very weird um it's kind of got jack bruce singing a lot of larry young um yeah. tony williams singing as well um like about three pieces which are just sort of drum drum pieces but it's kind of it's it's sort of like a weird jazz version of elp or something it's yeah, it's it does sound very like that yeah. very much early prog probably hugely influential in a lot of uh, UK artists, I don't know. But um, I, yeah, I'm glad to have it because I, I just um, really like Tony Williams records and these Lifetime records are just so, I mean, they definitely don't sound like anybody else. Other people sound like them, but um, he was definitely going his own way at this particular moment, smoking some very large cigars, <laughs> some very fast cars by the sounds of things. Yes, I mean, a lot of them are very odd, actually. I mean, you know, even I mean, the first two, I mean, Emergency was quite a strange record, really. I mean, it didn't yeah. sound like at all, really. Um, but he's great, yeah. But I know I think I did that. I'd probably regret selling that, actually. I'd probably mm. regret that at some point. Um, this is something I think I might have shown quite a long time ago, actually, on um, on the on the VC. This is um, on the Hubro label, which is uh, um, out of Norway. And this is... Um, um, B.J. Cole, who's a British pedal steel, wow, guitar, also works with kind of works with a lot of kind of. He's always been involved with experimental music and ambient music, mm -hmm. and here he's working with um, a band called 1982, who play um, basically play traditional folk instruments. I play uh, one 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 musician plays a hard anger fiddle, fiddle, which is a, which is a kind of Scandinavian type fiddle, and there's a bass and drums and so forth. And it's a it's a very peaceful kind of yeah very beautiful record actually and um i played it a lot when i got it and i forgot all about it and i've been putting it out the last couple of weeks it's a very very good and sounds great as well i mean they do a great job on their records they're always really well mastered and really nice sounding good pressings as well i'm sure i've got bj cole on a couple of procol harem records yeah yeah he was on everywhere basically right? mm. he was on lots of he's one of the people if you stick him in your um discog search you'll find out he's on like about 20 records he's got or something or other Mm. Well, this record arrived through the post today. So I've been going through this bit of a family phase, the Roger Chapman family sound. This was the first album that uh, Roger Chapman and Charlie Whitney made after they left family. And um, it's like a kind of hybrid of uh, King Crimson and family coming together. It wasn't 
my my memory of of what I thought was streetwalkers was far more kind of sort of boozy funk rock but actually this is quite pastoral at times mm. and uh it's got john wetton it's got mel collins it's got polly palmer it's got linda lewis it's got that that whole kind of you know very musicianly interesting alternative lineup of uk musicians from the early 70s this is a 1974 album mm. and um you know i was i was young then but it kind of somehow it, typif it typified something that was definitely alternative to what was happening in the charts. This is not chart music. Yeah. This is definitely album music. And uh, yeah, I just think um, this particular album is really worth investigating. There's some really very good songwriting um, and great instrumentation and actually a real variety of, you know, a, a much softer side to the old sandpaper vocals of roger chapman so mm. um yeah they're very cheap to pick up so some cheap heat i remember seeing family with um van de graaff generator once as a double bill i mean Trump and both of those are kind of quite um unusual bands really i mean yeah. they stood out completely outside of what was going on in the, yeah yeah at that time but family i thought were really good actually saw them a few times next up this is something that's common as mark really <laughs> It just, it just reminded me that you sometimes there's records you just completely take for granted and suddenly realize you haven't played them for probably about 20 years but because they were so familiar to you for, for a whole period of time and this carol king record it sounded great actually i mean it's got obviously great songs but also it sat sonically it was amazing mm. as well and i think it's kind of um just i, I just been uh, having a habit recently of just putting out some things which are absolutely spoke star i played um Physical graffiti a couple of days ago as well, the Led Zeppelin record, which I haven't played right through for probably, I don't know, again, about 20 years. And that sounded great as well. And I think sometimes, you know, records are popular for a reason. Actually, yeah. it's really good. Anyway, so Carol King, everyone knows this, but give it a spin. It sounded really good to me. I must yeah. say. It just makes me think of my dad's cassette version. <laughs> that was <laughs> yeah. the version in our household was, a, was on a cassette. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Well, next up, I have to say a big shout out and thank you to John, because this is my this is my Christmas present that arrived unheralded and rather I had no idea. I was thinking, have I gone mad? I don't remember uh, ordering this. This is a lovely um, Blue Note remaster of um, Ethiopia, is it Ethiopia Nights? Yeah. Donald Bird, which is it, again, it's it's mainly the Crusaders. Um, with Donald Byrd, um, uh, yeah. So we've got and and Harold Land and Bobby Hutchinson indeed on on vibes, but uh, very funky, um, like um, yeah, sort of coming out of the Miles Electric, but but definitely not quite at the um, you know Donald Byrd's next next port of call with the Mizell Brothers, but but very long and very grooving tracks, mm. really, and, and fabulous um, mastering, which John tells me is Kevin Gray. Mm. Um, really, really nice, nice heavyweight vinyl, just sounds fantastic. It's great, there were, there were two, of those kind of transition, there was another one which was uh, called, I think it was called, was it called Electric Bird? I think it was, mm. which was another good one, and one which came out much, much later on. Um, and that kind of been period was pretty good, actually. I mean, obviously the Mizell Brothers thing was uh, what people remember, but they, they was doing some good stuff too. Absolutely. And um, so I think now we're on to the last three, aren't we? So we are. First up. So this, this is like a very brief version of our normal videos. I know, absolutely. That's okay. Um, this is not a grail, but this was something I've been looking for for a long time in this format, which is Wes Montgomery's um, bumping album on um, Verve. And this was the, um, this is the master sound, um, mo sorry, the mobile fidelity sound lab version of it. And it just sounds amazing. It just sounds absolutely gorgeous. It was one of the ones with um, um, Don Sebesky arrangements on it. And somebody I, somebody I noticed on Discogs described it as being like dreamy analog sound heaven. And I think that's probably pretty much a good description of what it sounds like. A usual great band with um, Bob Cranshaw, this time, not Ron, Ron Carter and um, Grady Tate. Um, yeah. Just really, really beautiful stuff, actually. I mean, I, I kind of love those um, 
those um, Voice Montgomery albums on per patch. I think they're really great. And it's just really good. Got it really cheap. It was like about, I think it was 11 quid or 10.99 or something other for the, um, for the, uh, this version, which goes for about 50 quid now, I think, actually. So I'm very pleased to pick this up. But yeah, that was my kind of find of the year, really. Mm. Well, my find of the year was this, which I know is going to be controversial because of its, uh, where it's sourced from. This is uh, Hiroshi Suzuki and a track, uh, it's on an album called The Cat. And uh, Hiroshi Suzuki is a trombone player from Japan. It's an all Japanese band. Um, fantastic drumming from Akira Ishikawa. And um, if you kind of put the Headhunters in, in a sort of CTI mm. recording session, this is what it might sound like. Um, I, you know, it, there, there's a lot of contra controversy because um, this is on the Klimt label. Um, and the, the rumor is that it's actually uh, been mastered off a CD. I have to say the pressing sounds brilliant. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it really does sound good. And this album, if you if you get the original, is hundreds of pounds. Of pounds yeah. um, and I just found a copy on um, Juno really reasonably, like for about 16 quid or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I'm just delighted. It's And every track is a winner. There's a, a great um, version of the uh, Cannonball Adderley Walk Tall, but I mean, the track, it's the, everyone, the, the sample track is a track called Romance, which has been sampled about 50 times by various hip hop artists and has that kind of um, summer madness, everybody loves the sunshine kind mm. of vibe to it. But actually, Shrimp Dance and uh, Kuro Toshiro and the track Cat are all brilliant tracks. Shrimp a great track i really like that one that's yeah. been on a few um compilations that track i think as well which one the the sh shrimp dance yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well it's uh, it's also on on my latest radio show if anyone wants to tune in <laughs> like i got i with i got a clip i got the jean gilberto the white album yeah from and the, the cover was beautiful they've done a great job embossing the cover as it was originally embossed and then and i only had a kind of really horrible sounding cd brazilian which i bought in brazil actually of it, which had this horror, this glitch on it halfway through the first track, like a digital, and I put the record on it, had the same glitch on it. Oh, the, really? So it was obviously just mastered off that Brazilian CD. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've noticed they're banned now. A lot of them are banned on Discogs now. They're yes, these, they are banned, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, the, I've said the cover was amazing, actually, and I thought this really does look legit. Well, this, they, this cover looks good and the, and the album sounds fantastic i mean there's loads yeah. of reviews saying how brilliant it sounds on discogs well i think if they've used it i've got the japanese cd which sounds amazing actually so the the last mastering of it so if they use that you know probably sounds great yeah so my reissue of the year was a present from mark actually which was the oh. pharaoh sanders i think i love this record actually um there's kind of obviously a lot of stuff coming out I suppose this is not really technically even a reissue, actually. This is an archival um, record never been put out before. But it just sounds great, actually. The great sounding record, beautifully presented, I think, as well. I and mean, done a great job on the, on the notes and the photographs and so forth. And it's just a kind of, it's quite often reissues just fill in a little bit of a gap in somebody's um, career. But this really does sound quite different to some of the other work he was doing around the same time, even though the, even though the tracks are quite familiar ones. Yeah. And it came out on INA or INA records in um, France and seems to have disappeared actually. It's already, I mean, it's already going for a lot more money on Discogs. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Mm, that's good. Wow. Well, so uh, my uh, reissue of the year came out on Mr. Bongo. Mm. It's um, DD Bridgewater album, which I definitely showed earlier in the year, um, called uh, Afro Blue. And, and every tune on this is fantastic. I've, I've played yeah I mean it's just there's there's not a dud it's great all the way through it's got an amazing vibe to it um yeah I'm what can I say and it, it was a it was a very difficult to find record before so yeah. um you know it, it's it's sounds like it's it's been mastered from the original source um just really really nice it's got uh Cecil Bridgewater trumpet, Ron Bridgewater tenor sax, Ronald, Roland Hanna piano, George Mraz on bass, and Hotohiko Hino on drums. Very good. 
and yeah just really really nice uh electric jazz music from 1974. yeah she's great i think Dee bridgewater so I mean, a lot of competition for the record of the year actually we yes. have new bill frizzell new kind of pat Matheny, both of which have been played yeah all kinds of stuff but i have to say this is the record of the year for me oh really i have to say yeah i mean i think it's just really really brilliant and it kind of i just think it's kind of so much more interesting than a lot of other stuff that's coming out mm. I just love the kind of what i love about madlib is he doesn't use the usual sources as kind of in, either literally in terms of sampling or as inspiration he digs much deeper into stuff and his kind of sources are much more kind of weird kind of just odd kind of corners of the jazz world rather than using the obvious ones and it, I think sonically this is amazing this record mm -hmm. as well just sounds, the production is fantastic and um, made me also rediscover I also pulled out yesterday's new quintet which I haven't listened oh, yeah. to in a long time this week as well so yeah I think I have to say just for innovation and sound and yeah also I can feel I'm going to play this a lot actually I mean, really, mm. Yeah, so I think this is probably my release of the year. Really. Very nice. Um, well, mine is this, which probably John won't be surprised to see. No. Because <laughs> I've been going on about it all year. I thought it was going to be that. Old. Old. And um, this was just really impossible to find as well originally and still hard to source. So this is the album called Rose in the Dark. And uh, Cleo Soul is probably now most uh, well known for being one of the voices on the SAULT um, albums, which are, have, seem to be in everybody's albums of the year uh, category. I actually, and this is again also produced by Inflow, but I just think, you know, the, the actual pressing of this is far superior to any of the, the Salt albums I have. Mm. I just also find that the there's a kind of soothing quality to the music, which has been very welcoming and needed over the last nine months and um yeah i just i just, again every track for me is a winner and uh, you know she's not got the most um stunning you know she's there's no histrionics but there is something really uh genuine about the, the songs and the way she's singing them and i just love the backing just really really nice album i was thinking you reminded me of something I, I couldn't really put my finger on who she reminded me of for a long time obviously there's a little bit of there's a little bit of um um, kind of, obviously kind of soft soul stuff in there. She reminds me of a bit of Jalisa. Do you remember Jalisa? Yes. Carly yeah. sister. Yeah. Just the whole production and the kind of material as well. It's got a little bit of that same kind of vibe on it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, um, I mean, obviously there's a, there's a hint of Sade and, oh. a, and a hint of um, the, the, I can't remember what the lead, the lead singer of Loose Ends is, but that kind of, it's got a UK flavour, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, so that's, that's, those are our albums of the year. Definitely. I mean, there, as, as John says, there was, there was some great albums. Yeah, well, very... I'm sure both, both of our radio shows will contain yeah. of, our, of our top selections. Yeah, I, my, my one's coming out tomorrow, it's got a, an hour of just general stuff and then the Christmas hour. As well. Very nice. Very good Christmas records. And then next week I'm going to do a best of, I think. Yeah. And how about your uh, top uh, book or fit? Well, not top book. What are you reading, John, at the moment? Well, I'm reading two things, two books I bought when I was in South Africa, actually. And uh, they're just two, I think, prompted by the um, by the documentary, really. There's a couple of books about Fella, which are, I, I kind of read when they came out. One of this, this is a Michael Veal, he featured a lot in the. Um, documentary he was almost the main person who was um being interviewed this is a good kind of overview of fellas kind of life and career actually and this one was more this one came out almost the same time as the um, um red hot and riot record came out mm. it's almost like the backstory to that record in a way it's about fellas influence on hip-hop and on what was then the kind of called the kind of new soul scene as well and it's a collection of um articles really good actually and i remember buying these i bought there's a there's an amazing shop in johannesburg which is i was living in south africa for that year which is like a, a hardware store and on the third floor you get they suddenly find a record and bookshop it, but it's all mixed up with all buckets and stuff like that i remember buying this in this weird shop actually thinking there's not going to be a records here because it was all like kind of 
bits of ironmongery and then suddenly finding a record store right at the top. So anyway, yeah, two books about Feller, both both good, actually. Mm. Well, um, definitely my my must watch uh, TV thing is that Feller documentary, mm. which was on uh, BBC Four, it's, it's on iPlayer. Is it called The Roots of Afrobeat or something? I think it might have just gone, actually. Oh, has it? Oh. I think so. It's just about to, it's very close to, I think. Right. But that, that's a, a must watch. This is my book. This is The Knowledge Economy by Roberto Mangabera Unger. And this is a book which I am only not even a quarter into. And I can tell it's going to be, it's, it's not a page turner. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of deep um, thinking and uh, philosophical ideas around a different way of ordering um, or, you know, the, the way that the systems currently exist and about really harnessing, um, you know, what is described as the knowledge economy. So actually it benefits everybody rather than a very sort of select few. Yeah, because um, that was a bit, the original, I remember Gordon Brown had these knowledge economy lunches, actually, I see really? people too, which was looking at that kind of, and that was a much more though, much more of the idea of a kind of much more elitist i think that kind of approach to the economy that sounds much more a bit more uh, um, eclectic and open oh it? this is very much this this is basically how we can all stop behaving like machines yeah and let the machines do the stuff that machines do and we can actually you know use our human skills of uh, creativity and uh, imagination mm. uh, yeah. and innovation really and uh, you know just i feel like this whole nine or ten months has just revealed that the way things were was not that great <laughs> right. yeah and and that there it you know there's a, a, a huge moment of uh, an opportunity to really think differently about how we are how we are relating with the planet and mm. uh, you know I think I think there's a lot of a lot of optimism that uh, and, and and good new ideas that might come out of this I hope so. I think there's a lot that's got to change in people's values. So, absolutely. Before that happens, but I think there I is. Think, I, I think, think there is a shift in values that's happening as we speak. I hope, I hope so. I, hope I so. think it is. But um, anyway, so. let's um, end on a positive note, John. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah this, absolutely. This I think so. Slightly late, happy, a late happy Hanukkah to people and a. Uh, Early happy Christmas, I think. In order. Yes, and as ever, uh, we always appreciate um, the comments, the connections, um, and yeah, the listens on the radio shows. That's been another really important vehicle for uh, our own expression. Um, and who knows, John? I don't know when we're going to be seeing each other. It doesn't feel like for a while still. I think, yeah, I think I'm. I think the next trip. Out of London, it's got to be to Kent, I think, actually. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, we'll say goodbye for now. Yeah. And uh, see you next time. See you very soon. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>